photography can be a thrilly and glamorous hobby or job, one that can take you to far-flung exotic locations to once-in-a-lifetime events and introduce you to amazing people. It can also mean juggling tens of thousands of files with highly undescriptive names like img2543.jpg and a sprawling portfolio dispersed across multiple hard drives and catalogues, which I'm sure we can all agree is about as deeply unglamorous as it gets. Second only, in fact, to unblocking the U-bend on the shitter. But as mind-bogglingly shite and unspeakably dull as asset management is, it's one of those jobs from which there is no escaping. Unless you print your photographs and then ceremonially trash the raw files forever, you're forced to manage those photos that you've chosen to hang on to. And if you've been a photographer for a while, that probably means you have a ridiculously ad hoc collection of photographs on external drives, NAS drives, USB sticks, network drives, Lightroom or Capture One catalogs and Apple photos, to name one but a few. If only there was some way of seeing all those wretched photo and video files and all those different catalogs in one big ass unified collection. I've been a fan of Peak2 for a few years now. The first time I installed it, I immediately recognized the misery that had inspired Mathieu and the team at Syme in Paris to create this app. Its ability to index multiple third-party catalogs such as Lightroom Classic immediately lifts it above the competing asset management apps. And I have no idea why it doesn't get more love than it does. Perhaps the fact that it's unapologetically Mac only has something to do with it. Syme have greatly expanded upon the original signature features of Pig2 to add, among other things, powerful conversational search and full support for video files. And now, in this latest 2.3 point release, they've rolled out a feature that should be making the folks over at Milio stretch their collars. Networked Anytime Access. But before we get into that, since I last looked at Peak2, the interface has had an overhaul to improve usability and to accommodate the new features. If you're unfamiliar with the interface, it works like this. We've got the view types over here. So single view, masonry view, etc. We've got a map view there. Here in this bar, we have got the source folders, catalogs we've attached and the file system drive. So for instance, I've got my main photos drive there. In the middle portion, we have of course got the tiles. If I click on any of these, I can see the full size image, or I can go back to that masonry view. We're currently looking at the filter by date view, which is generated by Peak2, so I can open up any of these and click directly within them. To complement this, and since we looked at this app, this has been added, We've also got the actual folder structure. So this is my main photos drive, and I can go to 2025, for instance, and filter down and view files that way. So we've also got a keyword functionality here. This is generated by Peak2 using AI. So for instance, I can come into Animal and go to Marsupial, and we should get lots of photos of kangaroos. There you go. So I didn't create these, this classification, the AI, Machine learning algorithm in Peak2 did that for me. Up the top here is the main search bar. So if I want to get rid of that search for Marsuka, I just click the X and then we go back to our main landscapes catalog. We'll talk about the actual search functionality in a minute. We have a timeline, which I can click on. It shows where the photo, when the photos were taken. We've also got a metadata screen on the right hand side here. So we can view stuff like EXIF data and IPTC information. This will show stuff like keywords that you added in Lightroom if you did so. Down in the bottom left, we've got the export function. You can export directly from P2 down to fire up the parent app if you've indexed a catalog that was in Lightroom. Also got standard album and smart album functionality down here. 
So you can create clever, smart albums using keywords or AI categories, for instance. It's a great looking app, isn't it? But what makes Peak2 so useful is unifying all your photographs in one central location and then leveraging that single centralized collection. Allow me to demonstrate the ability to bring together photographs from myriad locations is the true power of Peak2. And allow me to demonstrate that. I'm the official show photographer for one of the local little rural shows, the Berry Show. And over the years, I've shot many photographs and we've also got photographs taken by other photographers that have been donated to us and they're all in myriad locations. So for instance, I have got some photographs in my main Adobe Lightroom catalog. I've got some which are on a network drive on my wife's MacBook. I've got some that are in Apple Photos. And what I've been able to do is create this one album down the bottom here, you can see with 1,819 photographs in it, which is all of those brought together. So I just made a new album and I dragged in the photos to this album wherever they happen to exist whether they're on a network drive or in apple photos or in my adobe lightroom classic directory so i've got all of the images at hand from the various years that i've photographed this event and i can perform all the usual clever searches using conversational search metadata and all the other cool stuff that's in peak to so for instance let's say they wanted me to find a picture of a cow for the show directory for the next year i can come up to the top here and type in cow and here we can see some photographs click on that and this is only searching within this particular subset of folders. Being able to search across all those widely dispersed archives of photographs is unbelievably useful, particularly if your haphazard filing system is as chaotic as mine. Sime added support for video files in the middle of the last year, and since then that feature has been augmented with the addition of AI transcripts, which are fully searchable. The big new feature in this 2.3 release of Peak 2 though is of course the new share mode, which enables you to view your Peak 2 catalog either on the local network or on the internet. The new share functionality is tucked away at the top right here. All I have to do is click on this share button. Now, as you can see, we have two options here. We've got a local and a public server option. Local obviously means only people on my local network using computers, iPads or whatever, will be able to view these files. Public obviously means the wider internet. So if I was working remotely, for instance, I could access all of my photographs. Let's click on the local version. So just here on my network, and I click the start button to spin up the server. And I can now click on open in web browser. And it will fill now populate the screen with my P2 library. So I have access to everything that's in P2 through this network connection. We can do the same conversational searches that we do in the main app. So for instance, people on a beach. And there are the photos. I can download them from here if I want or share them. I've also got all the collections over on the left here, the sources of those files. So these are the finder sources. This is my main Lightroom catalog. I've also got my Apple Photos library. You will also notice that the collection that I made manually, the Berry Show Photography is here. So I could click on that for instance. And then I can share this directory with other people on my network. So if I need to give access to these files to anyone at the show for some publication they're producing or something like that, all I have to do is give them access this way. Can of course also filter by color, star ranking and file type and change the sort order if I want. The new share mode has been well thought out and well implemented. Its main advantage is that none of your photos or videos are stored in the cloud. But this is also its principal drawback. The share library will only be visible while your Mac's on and running Peak2. In use, the share libraries were fast and responsive. In fact, the entire app is running quickly these days as smooth scrolling and virtually no lag on thumbnail rendering. The team at Syme have slowly upgraded the user experience in this app 
And they've also worked hard on the stuff that doesn't often get a mention, the boring stuff in the background that makes the app experience as fluid as possible and which is often neglected. Pig2 is a lot quicker, more efficient and more nuanced than when I first installed it several years ago. There are all sorts of deft touches, such as the way photos subtly fade in and out as you click through them. And this makes browsing a pleasing and frictionless experience. There are parts of the app that I don't think are very useful and which I never use. The AI tab, for instance, is just a load of pointless graphics that have no value to me as a photographer whatsoever. I also never use the editing workspaces because I just don't see the point of them. They're supposed to enable you to trap the changes you've made to photo or video files within the apps and to dip in and out of edits easily amongst other features, but I just don't care about that. I just want to open the file in my raw editor of choice and be done with it. But I do make good use of most of the other features in Peak 2, particularly the AI search, which enables me to speedily find photographs from the vaguest of descriptions in a catalog of over a quarter of a million images. The big new feature in this release is one that's been sat on the development roadmap for a while, and it's great to see it live and working so well. One of Peak 2's biggest competitors is Mylio, an asset sharing service for photographers that's marketed as a cloud independent media library. Mylio is a perfectly good product, but it's a basic service and it currently costs 200 US dollars a year. Meanwhile, you can buy a subscriptionless lifetime license for Peak 2 for 189 bucks or subscribe annually for 89 dollars. And while we are comparing those two apps, Mylio does not have conversational search and doesn't support third-party catalogs for apps like Lightroom or Capture One, like Peak2 does. The ability to combine photo and video libraries is a welcome addition to the app. If you're a photographer that also shoots video, perhaps if you're a drone pilot or a content creator, or you just want to manage your family photographs and videos, then it's a brilliant way of having it all in one central location. Simon, I've got a few promising features at the top of the roadmap, the most requested of which is fault file management capabilities, so you can physically move assets around while still tracking them. Peak2 is one of those apps that's out there on its own, forging ahead into new territory, and it's great to see. If you're suffering from asset paralysis and you're a Mac user, it comes highly recommended. And that will do us for this look at Peak2 2.3 from Syme. How do you manage your humongous collection of photographs and videos? Hmm? Let me know in the comments section below. If you got value from this content, then please remember to give it a like and consider subscribing for more photo, video and drone related content from me point you in the direction of my sub stack as well, details which you will find in the description below. Until the next time, guys, ta-ta.